Hey guys, this is Mr. McComb, uh, just coming to you today for a little bit of math work. Uh, hope you all are doing okay and uh, getting along pretty well with school stuff. And I um, did want to go through a few things uh, on our math pages today. So hopefully yesterday you completed the first couple pages uh, with the YouTube video help if you needed that tutorial and going through just estimating quotients. Uh, I know that guy's a little silly, but he does a good job explaining the material. So I did want to follow up with you and get into a couple uh, examples. So uh, we're looking at estimating quotients using compatible numbers. Um, definitely wanted to talk with you all and make sure you're uh, understanding how to do that because if you're going to your parents and saying, hey, I'm supposed to uh, estimate and round and we have these things called compatible numbers, uh, they might be like, I don't, why would we do, why would we use these silly numbers to round? That's not rounding to the nearest 10 or 100 or anything. Uh, so remember with these, uh, when we're doing these, we're doing it because these compatible numbers help us use basic facts for mental math. So the goal is to just make things easier. Remember, an estimating a quotient, estimating any way, is meant to help us um, <clears throat> get to a quick answer that's close and doesn't make us write it all out and work out all kinds of stuff. It's using the things we know that we can do quickly, right? So uh, when we were moving through uh, the first lesson, you were just using those powers of 10, those patterns of division to move those decimal points uh, and things like that. And now what we're going to do is just using uh, using these compatible numbers help us uh, get a close answer. So once we do start actually solving these, which we'll be doing next week, uh, we'll be able to uh, you know, do that well and get it, get ourselves in the right ballpark for that. So we're going to go through these uh, first three, four, and five problems, which hopefully you did yesterday uh, as a, as a follow-up or whenever you started math uh, this week. Um, and we're going to go through that, how we can use those compatible numbers to go with the rounding to get to those compatible numbers. And then also, of course, use those basic facts. So let's look at number three to begin. So the big thing with this, we're always going to look at, oh, you know what, let's talk about some vocab. Uh, we're always going to talk about dividend, divisor, and quotient. So I kind of made these little blanks here for us to fill in uh, as we go through that. Just kind of be thinking, okay, let's make sure we're using our vocab. Our first part here, the number we're dividing is going to be the dividend. And we take the divisor, and when we divide and find the answer, we get the quotient, okay? So we're going to, again, kind of work on it. You guys have been doing a great job all year kind of using that vocabulary, and I'm going to kind of do that today. So here's like a little, little helper if you're not sure which one's which. But, okay, so with these, the way we're going to handle it is we're going to first look at each divisor. Now, if that divisor is a single digit like 7, we're just going to keep it the way it is. Uh, 7 is a number we can easily... Uh, round or not, not sorry, not round, uh, but use our basic facts with. We know our sevens facts, and that's going to kind of come in handy as we go through. So, let me make this a little bigger so we can see uh, a little easier. Bear with me here, it's not the greatest little setup, but I'm working on it. Uh, so, we're going to divide by seven. Now, again, uh, we're going to round our dividend here, it's 161 and seven tenths. Uh, we're going to round that to a number that's going to allow us to use some basic facts. Now, we can go uh, as we practice, and we will on the next couple parts, uh, we can pick a number lower, we can pick a number higher. We're not going to round this to 160, even though that might be the closest 10, because we can't do 16 divided by 7. That just doesn't work. It's not a, it's not a fact we know. What we want to do with this is round this to a group of 7 that would help us quickly do a math fact, quickly get to the, the division based on some basic facts. You know, again, those basic facts are the goal. Uh, the number I'm going to choose for this is going to be 140. Now, again, if you're doing this with your parents or they're nearby, they might say, why in the world would you round 161 and 7 tenths down to 140? Again, the answer is we're using these compatible numbers, right? So we know what's the basic fact we can get out of this. Well, if I look at it this way, I can think of this like 14 divided by 7, and of course, that's a basic fact we know, right? 14 divided by 7 is 2, so if I have 140 divided by 7, then that's going to mean we're, our answer is going to be about 20. Okay, so again, we're taking that, the goal here, again, the parents, if you're watching, the goal is to uh, round the number to something close, and again, we wouldn't necessarily say 161 and 140 are necessarily close, but they're close enough based on the thinking of groups of 7, uh, and then we can round that to 140, so again, we're taking advantage of that basic fact. We know, of course, 14 divided by 7 is 2. So 140 divided by 7 
is 20. Okay, so again, uh, next week we'll get into actually solving problems like this where we'll find the exact answer. But a lot of times, especially if we're doing um, the dividing uh, with divisors that are more than 10, or if we can divide by numbers like 39 or 57, whatever it might be, uh, we can uh, use compatible numbers to get us started on that, and that's going to be uh, pretty handy. Okay, so here's our first example. Uh, 140 divided by 7 would be 20, so that means we can think around the answer for this 161 and 7 tenths divided by 7 is going to be somewhere close to 20. Now, we could also go higher than 161 and 7 tenths, so here I rounded down to a compatible number. If I went higher, I could say I could do 210. Now, again, 140 is obviously closer than 210 is to 161 and 7 tenths, uh, but we've got that there. So we can do 210 divided by 7 would be about 30. And again, that works. It's fine. It's just an estimate. It's just getting us close. As long as we're using the process the right way, we can kind of choose whatever we want for our numbers, okay? Let's go on to number four. We're going to try to speed it up now that we did our first example. Uh, number four, we have a divisor of nines. We're going to keep that one there. We're going to think of our nine fact, okay? So we're going to divide by nine. Uh, we have 17 and 9 tenths is the dividend, so we need to choose a number close to that uh, that's going to easily divide by 9, and you might think, oh, I know what that's going to be. If I add just a little bit and round it up to the nearest whole number, hey, I get 18. So, well, okay, let's talk about that. That one kind of makes sense if we would round that in any case, but it also works because it's a compatible number. So we, of course, know 18 divided by 9 is two right so uh we're now we're able to think of those basic math facts we know 18 divided by nine basic division fact equals two and again that gets us close and then if we were, we were to actually solve the problem uh we'd have we'd have ourselves kind of set up and think okay my answer is gonna be somewhere around two and again that's the goal uh we're not obviously finding exact answers right now but we're working on the skills that will help us once we do uh, get into that next week okay Got my stormtrooper coffee mug here to keep me. I left my science mug that you guys all see me with all the time. I left that at school, but I got I'll maybe have a different fun coffee mug every day. All right, back to business. Okay, um, where we get into some ones where we need to think a little bit more is when we have divisors that are greater than 10 or 21. So, the thing with this is we might we probably can't think of um too many mental math facts as far as dividing by 21. So if we have a number like this, what we want to do is actually round that first to the nearest 10. So of course, uh, if we have 21, we can just round that to 20, and that's going to make things a little easier for us. So if we see a two-digit divisor, unless it's like 10, 11, or 12, like some of the facts we could probably know, uh, we're, we're usually going to round that to the nearest 10 first, okay? And then we'll talk about why that's good, because that's going to help us think about patterns of powers of 10, uh, and we're going to kind of start putting it all together, okay? Now, with this one, uh, we have a 145 and 4 tenths. So we want to round this number to something that we can basically think, like, if I'm dividing it by 2, uh, what would that be? So what I'm going to choose here is if I take 145 divided by 20, uh, sorry, divided by 21, I can round that to uh, 140. If I do that, I'm kind of doing like I did back here, right? Thinking that same, that same basic fact, except sort of the reverse fact family. Uh, but we're thinking about that 14 and how it relates. Um, so then we can think, all right, let's look at this one here. What I'd like to do with this is if I have powers of 10, or as we did this earlier in the year with dividing whole numbers, we can cancel some zeros here. And then, hey, look at that. Okay, we took this big, ugly thing, 145 and 4 tenths divided by 21. And we use some of our math skills here. And we just basically turned, I can get a close answer if I just think of 14 divided by 2 which we all know, again, that is seven. So again, there's a quick and easy uh, estimate for that. Okay, so again, when we get a two-digit divisor, best thing is usually to round that to the nearest group of 10. So again, 21 becomes 20, and then that allows us to cancel some zeros. And then, hey, easy peasy, we just got 14 divided by two, seven, easy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move on to a couple down here. So you guys are gonna now go into this on, on your own section. What I want you to do with this is work on how we can do uh, some two estimates, a high and a low. Now, when we did compatible numbers with whole number division earlier in the year, we we're getting pretty good with this. It is important to kind of refresh. Uh, just like up here, where I said we could round this to 210 if we wanted to, it's not exactly close, but it would still work as the next group of compatible numbers. So again, uh, we're going to kind of look at that uh, as we get into these, okay? So um, for these, I've got a couple blanks set up with our 
spots to fill in. And I think this is a good way to do it, especially if you're on your own. I, of course, did it to make my video a little easier to understand. Um, but it's good to set this up and just fill in the blanks as you go. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with this one. We have 15 and 5 tenths divided by 4. Uh, 4 is an easy fact we can divide by. It's a number we know. It's a basic fact number. So we're going to keep that. I'm going to fill in fours for both. So when I talk about uh, doing a high and a low estimate, we can round down to the closest lower uh, compatible number. And we can also round up to the next highest compatible number uh, that's going to make this easy for us. OK, when you look at 15 and 5 tenths divided by four, you might the number that might quickly come to mind is that no, is the number 16, because, of course, we know 16 divided by four is four. Uh, that way, that would be our high number. We're going to we're going to round it up to get there. So I'm gonna actually going to fill this in down below. I'm kind of going in reverse here, but because uh, then you might see that instantly and think that, OK, well, I know 16 divided by 4 is 4. Right. So there there's, again, a quick estimate. That's how we're using these compatible numbers. Uh, now, if we think about the low number rounding down, we're not going to round to 15 because 15 divided by 4 is not a fact we know. We're not going to go down to 14 either. We're, we're not going to do that because we can't do 14 divided by 4 is a, is a quick and basic fact. The next group of 4s, we can think, okay, I have 4, 8, 12, and then 16. So actually our next compatible number, our low number that we would want to use is 12, okay? And of course we know then 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now, one of the things we worked on, if you're really getting good with this and using compatible numbers and feeling comfortable, is we talked about early in the year how we can know which our answer is going to be closer to which of these. OK, so the way we can determine that is if we have uh, the two compatible numbers we chose, the one that's closest to the actual dividend is going to be the way we can know our answer is going to be closer to that. Or, okay, the actual answer is going to be closer to that. So we know here from doing our high and low, our answer is going to be between three and four. Uh, but if we also go a little step further, we can think, okay, when I went from 15 and 5 tenths up to 16, uh, then we only had a little bit of an increase. We only went up by 5 tenths. If we went down to 12, then that's quite a bit lower. We kind of have to go farther to get to that compatible number. So again, not a huge emphasis here because as long as we're doing this part, we're good. But if you really start to think about it, you might say, OK, I know my actual answer is going to be closer to this one. It's going to be closer to four because, again, I only rounded this uh, 15 and 5 tenths by a little bit. OK, uh, I'm going to try to go into a couple other ones here. I'm actually talking more than I meant to because uh, I only have 15 minutes on this recording device I have. Uh, but let me go ahead and get into this. So now we're going to look at our next one. OK, here we have. Oh, sorry. Here we have we're dividing by 18. I'm going to look at this one next. Dividing by 18. Uh, we want to round that to a to a number that's going to be making it easier to it for us. So again, what I'm going to do here is make these 20. OK, I'm going to round these to 20 for our divisor for number eight. I'm skipping number seven because we can you guys can handle that one now that we've talked about this a little bit. OK, uh, now, again, I'm dividing by 20. So I got to basically think in groups of twos um, and I'm between 410 and 510. So between those two, uh, if I go down, I might just do 400. That's probably the best way to go. And if I go up, I can do 420 and then think, OK, I'm going basically by 20s here and I can kind of use that to help me out. Um, then what we can do again is go okay, cross out zero, cross out a zero to help it make it easier with our powers of 10 and what we know how those work. 40 divided by two, I can think, well, what's what's half of what's half of 40? If I take 40 and split it into two, of course, that's going to be 20. And the same thing here, if I cross some zeros out, my, my, my high estimate, uh, we can do 42 divided by two and, uh, sorry. and we know, of course, if we split 42 in half, that's going to be 21. So again, these aren't basic facts we necessarily know or memorize, but we can think through that pretty easily. Uh, 42 uh, divided by 2, half of that would be 21. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to go ahead and pause my video now and maybe start a new one because I only have a 15 minute time limit here. And you know me, sometimes I get talking and it goes a little longer than I expected. Uh, but uh, I'm going to pause it here. We'll, I'll, I'll probably post another video, figure out another one uh, to go on to this number 10 because this one is a little tricky. And then we'll go on to the next page as well. Where we're getting to some word problems and using charts and instead of just here's the problem. Let's figure it out. OK, uh, so another video will be coming up uh, again. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we miss you. Hopefully we can get back to normal before too long. Uh, but hopefully this is also a little helpful tool we've got. Uh, right here. Okay, so be on the lookout for the next video. Uh, you can probably go ahead and finish up this page uh, 305 uh, in the time you have allowed. Uh, and then the next video will cover number 10. If you want to go ahead and try number 10, 
and then look for the next video. We'll do page 306, get you started on that too. Okay, thanks guys.